How are you doing guys? It's Alessandro here from Spicy Mustache with some new tips in order to help you create in your own green area, indoor or outdoor, following the principle of do as nature does. Over the past few years, I saw an incredible growth of the gardening community involving more and more people every single day. However, if you check online for tips about gardening, especially if you have a small space, it could be pretty confusing due to the amount of misleading information. I decided to create a list of tips that could help you to improve your skills no matter if you are a beginner or advanced gardener. So dig up the like button and today I'll show you my best gardening hugs that you wish you knew before. Today I'm in Suffolk to meet my friend Mitch and have a tour of his amazing garden. Yo, yo, peeps. I'm Mitch. 10 months ago, I switched East London for the East Coast. Welcome to my organic kitchen garden. It's lush and full of life. I grow using a no-dig system. There's certainly no man-made chemicals or nasties here. The first thing that I would like to mention is to make your own fertilizer. I spoke before about Jadam and Korean natural farming as a way of gardening using what's available around you. You have to think that every plant, whenever they reach maturity, they have all the nutrients necessary to nurture the same exact plant. All you need is microorganism that breaks down the plant material and make it much easier to be absorbed by young plants. You can simply go to your local woods or park and pick up some leaf mold from an area with high vegetation making sure that it's not sprayed by any sort of chemical. Add this leaf mold along with the plant material with either rainwater or filtered water. For example, if you have a tomato plant, you can cut it down with your garden edge shears, add your leaf mold and water, and it will be ready to be used for your garden in a few months. You can top it up with more leaf mold and plant material at any time. This could last over many months, so you could potentially do that at the end of the season, so you will get prepared for the next season. Next tip, mulching. Mulching is a great way to retain water content, improve soil structure and suppress weeds. Mulching is simply applying a layer of compost, wood chip, straw, sheep's wool or leaf mold to the surface of your soil. One of my favourite mulches to use, seaweed. Seaweed is a broad spectrum fertiliser jam packed with goodies. It's got hormones that help your plants grow above and below the soil. Another great idea to maximize your harvest, especially in an urban garden like mine, where you don't have much space, is to use the vertical spaces around your garden. For example, your fence could potentially extend your garden, if not doubling the amount of food that you could potentially harvest every season. Most people, when they start a garden, tend to grow plants in pots or rows, ignoring the fact that walls, stairs, or even your fence could be used to maximize the amount of harvest. Also, it's a great way to add beauty to your garden if you're trying to add something a bit unique and a bit of character. However, if you don't like to drill walls or poke your fence, you can still grow vertically using some really cheap and affordable materials. I made a few videos in the past about growing food using vertical trellis, shelving, or even structures using recycled materials. Once you discover all the amazing techniques that you could use to grow food vertically, it will open your eyes to a complete different way of gardening. One of my favorite gardening hacks is companion planting. It boosts growth, repels pests, and could potentially improve the flavor of your crops. The diversity that companion planting brings is good for pollinators and for the soil health. Marigolds, calendulas, nasturtiums, all make good buddies for your veggies. There's also some other guys that you can use. The Three Sisters, Corns, Beans and Squashes, or the El Clasico, Tomato and Basil. The next tip is great for beginners that are just starting gardening and they didn't manage to source seeds on time for the beginning of the season. You could go to your local grocery store, ideally an organic shop, but any sort of shop could work. Buy a bag of dried beans or dried peas, soak them overnight and the day after they will be ready to be planted in your garden. I made a really cool video with Jack Spudge about growing peas that you can find in the left corner of the screen. They are an incredible source of vitamins and proteins for your body. They are extremely easy to grow and you could also consume just the shots 
as microgreens. Also, they are brilliant companion plants for the other plants in your garden. They store nitrogen at the root level in nodules, so whenever the plants finish to produce, just cut them at the base and leave the roots in the ground, so they will slowly release the nitrogen and it will be available for the next plant that you're gonna plant in the same area. One of the hacks I wish I knew before starting growing was multi-sowing. Multi-sowing allows us to grow more crops in the same amount of space and use less compost. Some vegetables that work well with multi-sowing are onions, beetroots, spinach, radishes, and peas. Today, I'm gonna to be sowing some onions for overwintering. Planning monthly what to plant and where to plant in your garden will maximize, if not doubling, the amount of food that you could potentially harvest throughout the growing season. When I started gardening, I used to plan and plant things just at the beginning of the season without planting anything else throughout the rest of the season. This technique allows you to organize your garden in a way that you won't plant and harvest just a single time during your growing season, but you will be able to do it two to three times maximizing the production from your garden. It's also a way to be on top of your garden, feel the guts and having a backup in case anything goes wrong. An important tip for a more sustainable future is saving your own seed. Seed sovereignty is under threat from the big corporations genetically modifying and patterning our seeds. We need to take back control. Home saved seed allows varieties to adapt to your specific growing conditions. Saving seed is particularly important for rare heritage and heirloom varieties. You can help preserve seed sovereignty by using them, saving them and passing some on. Some tips for saving seed. Always save seed from your best performing plant. Remember to label all of your seeds so you know which is which. Once your seeds are dry, it's best to store them in paper bags as seeds stored in plastic tend to rot. Another great and low care way of making your own mulch full of microorganisms that will improve the soil web and benefit your garden is to make your own leaf mold. You just need to add dry leaves to a bag and leave them in shade in a cool area so they will slowly turn into leaf mold and this will improve the biodiversity of your soil web and benefit your garden. Poke a few holes in the bag to allow air circulation and also the excess water to drain out. This is the same exact process that happens in nature when trees drop leaves and branches to the floor and they will turn slowly into leaf mold thanks to macro and microorganisms that decompose the leaves. Don't worry if you don't have any worms in your bags because they will always find their way in if the conditions are just right. Our last tip is make a plan so you know what to plant and where to plant it. Keep in mind where gets the most sunshine and where gets the most shade and plant crops accordingly. Write down a sowing timeline or use a seed sowing calendar so you can maximize crop production from your growing space. That's our top 10 tips that we wish we knew before we started growing. Thank you for having me today, Mitch. It was really cool. And if you like today's video, please subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notification settings so you can be notified every time I post a new video. And I'll see you next Friday for a new episode. Thank you so much for watching. See ya. Yeah.